Use my affiliate link to support the channel down in the description. What's up, guys? This is MyGamesGX here, and this is going to be my updated Phantom Nightmare uh, Brand Despia deck profile. So we hit 100 likes on the last video, uh, and I set the goal to get this deck profile out here a little bit right before Phantom Nightmare because I know that you guys might want a few tip uh, pointers and just direction on what to do with Branded in this upcoming format because Populous and uh, Promethean Princess are quite scary cards, but I think that Brandon has a lot of options. So we're gonna talk about a lot of those options and then go over the deck I would bring into a regional tomorrow. So uh, with that being said, let's get right into it. We got a 45 card main deck, guys. We are actually not running a huge uh, a huge pile today. Um, I will get uh, to uh, chat comments while we are uh, going through the deck profile uh, or after the deck profile. But yeah, well, let's get right into it. So, uh, we are going to begin off, of course, with three Fallen of Albaz, three Aluber. These are super standard, no, nothing really to say here. And then two uh, Cartesia and one Quem actually this time around. So, I'm predicting that this format coming up is going to be a little less grindy. So, I'm not seeing necessarily the point of running 2 Quem at the moment. 2 Quem felt really good pre-Phantom Nightmare format because of the fact that Grames got extremely grindy. Whether it was because everyone was on 100 hand traps... Or just because a lot of the decks were in the same kind of... Just because the ban list put the game in actually a pretty decent spot. So I felt like the double Quem was good for those games that went to turn 3 or 4. Where you really do need to make Branded opening into a, a live card on your opponent's turn. However, I think the 1 will just cut it right now. In order to get a more consistent build. That's what we're trying to do with this. We are at 45 cards. I could have actually made it 40 cards. However, I wanted everybody to um be able to i want to be able to see the non-engine that really matter this format because there are two non-engine that are going to win a lot of your games in branded despia currently i am maining them we are going to get into them this is why we're not running the chanel shadal ariel because i think at a 45 card build we are going to be able to blitz through our deck and see these non-engines quite consistently and we run the thrust as well so we're going to get into all of that uh, Quem Cartesia, very good. I, I experimented with more. I just, I don't want to run more Quem without running more Albion the Shrouded Dragon, which we will get into. Uh, one Tri Brigade Mercurial, one Tragedy, very standard. We are off of the Allure of Darkness package, which is something that you guys will be definitely used to um, if you have been um, following my deck profiles recently. We have been on Allure of Darkness. We've been able to run that card with impunity in the format because no one has been main decking branded fe or sorry draw and lockbird um draw and lockbird destroys the allure of darkness it makes allure of darkness pretty bad to run and that's why i think we weren't able to run it after super heavy really put droll into a lot of people's main decks and then like this last format people really just took out the droll because of enchained and pearly so i thought we were able to get um away with allure of darkness very easily the last two four bats um so i don't see any need to go up to two you could also run a second mercurier but i don't run actually a gold sark because i think it, it plays into droll and lockbird which is what we're going to get into right here with the albion the shrouded dragon so so albion the shrouded dragon why do we only run one it's because we don't want to play into droll i think it was an extremely amazing consistency piece that we've been able to run at three the last two formats on top of allura darkness like running three allure three albion and two quem was just like such an insane consistency uh, on top of like a branded and a high spirits you basically never got to brick with those ratios however this format you are going to see droll and lockbird i don't see how this does not happen drone lockbird is essentially our maxi at this time like uh chris often said that in my discord the other night which is very true um uh droll is currently the, the modern maxi and because of that um with things like populace which literally says win the game if you search this card you need to run things like drone lockbird and a lot of people are going to be running drone lockbird as well so i putting this to one um, is just fine. I think we've always, we've always usually like historically ran this at one. I don't think we need to run this at three unless we're on the three alert plus like two quem. And with the prevalence of drolls, that's why we're not on that. So I 
We got uh, Saranir and Lubalion. These guys are... You need to run them, obviously. Um, Saranir is a card I feel like I need to, like, actually make a video on legitimately on its own because it's a... It's such a good tool to be able to get to Branded Fusion that not a lot of people usually see those lines. Like, this card gets you to Branded Fusion most of the time. And then, of course, Lubalion is just an amazing tool going first or second to go full combo and get the Branded Loss. So, uh, Luis Vasquez, how do I join Despia? You just become a channel member and you become a Despian. Uh, you get a bunch of channel perks, including access to my... Uh, see, uh, the hidden uh, channel on my Discord where you get to just ask me questions and then uh, you have a direct line to me. I'm also going to be posting all my deck lists early there. I'm also going to have uh, early videos posted. So if you want to become a Despian, uh, make sure to become a channel member, join for $5 a month and you get some nice emojis in the chat and you get a new like channel sticker. You like get to upgrade from a Despian tragedy all the way to a mirror jade by the end of it. So really do appreciate y'all's are the goats. We got uh, 47 people watching right now. So yeah, Lubelion, Saranir. We don't really need to go too much more into that. I, I remember like I saw people back in the day say you don't need to run them. They're just insane because Branded Lost is how you win a lot of these matchups. Of course, Fire King can get rid of Branded Lost very easily. I just don't think you should cut these because of that because you can still banish the Dar Diabell Star and Brand Lost is still a great card. Jin. We are back on Nadir Servant, folks. So, I think Nadir Servant is actually going to kind of kind of go hard this format. Um, whereas last format, I ended up cutting it towards the end because it just didn't feel that good. There were... I don't know what it was. It, 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 there was a lot of times where Nadir Servant just did not feel great last format for, a very, for various reasons. I think it was because it was a lot more of a diverse format. And a lot of people are the... Uh, you know the send off of maximus you know sometimes you just be giving people pluses and stuff like that i think in this current format where you're going to be seeing just fire decks not a lot of them end up running the uh super poly package at all so you aren't going to be giving them pluses off of maximus um maybe with voiceless voices that could become an issue because i've seen that deck run super poly however i think that with the plethora of hand traps still going around i think nadir servant's going to do just a fine job frankly um, so that's why we run the Maximus, but we'll talk about that more when we get into Nadir Servant. And then the two bricks, of, and then two other bricks of the deck, uh, Dark Magician and, uh, Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. Why are we one, running Gimmick Puppet? Why are we running Dark Magician in this meta, you might be asking? 51 viewers, what's up, guys? So, Gimmick Puppet is still, one of, like, the best going first option in the game. I don't, you know, in the... In this format, you might end up seeing people main Crow, but I don't think Crow does enough in this current format because you do want to banish the princess. However, you need to banish more than the princess for it to be that good. So for that reason, more people are going to end up being on Bell um, and like Soul Release. So I think Gimmick Puppet is actually going to be better this format. All things considered, there are going to be less people running outs in their main deck to puppet. It, it, because in this format, it just felt like a lot of people were running crows and bells. Next format, we might still see that. However, I still think that puppet is going to be able... For my testing alone in Phantom Nightmare, it does feel a lot better. This is something that could be cuttable going into the format. I'm going to be going into the format with puppet. Um... Because as I said, beginning out, this format isn't going to begin as like a 40% fire format. It might, it might, it might develop into that. And that's why we're going to have to end up maining Nel Shadal Ariel. Uh, but right now we're not. Nel Shadal Ariel is a very cool card because when it's sent to the graveyard through a card effect, you, d you get to banish uh, three cards from your opponent's graveyard. So that essentially deals with a lot of the fire cards that the princess can end up targeting you can deal with the Ambla Whale. Um, and you can send off a Grand Guignol. I don't think we need to run that. Currently, if I was going into a tournament the first weekend of the format, we need to get an idea of where these decks stand in terms of power. Yes, Snake Eye is very good. It's going to be the best deck in the room. Um, I don't think... Branded has amazing matchups still against Fire King. Don't get that twisted. I made a video on this for that reason. We have Dragoon, which is a card they can still not out post-Phantom Nightmare. 
Same with Rescue Ace outside of Access Code. You know, or, you know well, or Fire King might be on Ask Access Code at that point too. However, um, I still, uh, we have a really good uh, Fire King matchup. So I still think that we need to run the Dark Magician for that reason alone. Dragoon just goes really hard um, into the, uh, both of those fire matchups. They really don't have great in ways, uh, deck, uh, ways to out a Dragoon. Um, they have a way to stop you getting to the Dragoon. However, going first, Dragoon, you're going to want it. And then going second, it's pretty good to break boards. On top of that, you're going to see Kashira is probably a top six or seven deck. You're going to see a lot of Kashira. Kashira is quite good right now still. Um, as we saw from uh, how this last format developed. So, I think that Dark Magician well warrants its slot right now. And same with uh, Puppet. But Puppet, if you end up seeing people running a lot of Bells and Crows, you probably just want to side this out. I just think it's going to cover a lot of your other matchups. And the fact people are going to be on a lot of Bells means you can play around the Bell and do an uninterrupted gimmick Puppet, which is something we are going to have to talk about a lot more because uh, doing an uninterrupted gimmick Puppet means that it's unrespondable when you do the gimmick Puppet target with uh, Sanctifier. So they can't Bell that. And that's what you're going to have to play into. Um, so the last monsters are three Drone Lockbird. I think we need to run th Drone Lockbird. We do have um, we do have the uh, we do have the uh, Fire King matchup and the fi uh, Rescue Ace uh, matchup to contend with. Also, just like other Rogue like Minadium, we weren't running this in the main deck last format because there wasn't a whole lot of point to like. Fire King, yes, lost to Droll, but the other decks didn't as much. Now, with a lot of decks, including a pure Snake Eye variant, going to be running around that automatically loses to Droll, and these are the best decks. You know, with Bonfire on top of that, these decks are playing into Droll way more. So, we want main Droll. Uh, this is our only hand trap. We are no longer maining Ash. Ash is quite bad this format, because if you go Ash on, like, their Ponyx or Snake Eyes Ash, they just make Hita, <clears throat> and then they summon your Ash, and then they continue to make Princess and go off. So there's really not a whole lot of a point to run Ash Blossom in my main deck. A lot of other decks will be maining Ash, but some might not be maining Ash for that very reason. Um, which is going to be good for Branded. This is one of my points on why Branded is actually quite the good... Um, meta call right now because <laughs> this is going to be like the worst ash format in quite some time um so i think droll and lockbird though well warrants it it's obviously bad against the labyrinth decks however labyrinth transaction rollbacks good guys labyrinth is not good this format <laughs> what's up nick and e? yo chris let's get you that starlight dragoon brother i'll check the binder again when i get home i appreciate it typhon is pretty prevalent though takes care of dragoon pretty nicely so beware of that branded bros of course and that's why because of Ty typhon i think a lot of people in the current format need to have a safe uh plan for typhon or play around the typhon summon um you can usually see a typhon summon coming when you're like if they make typhon here do they win you know um so that's when you kind of have to like realize and stop their plays and then also uh, having the Albaz in your pocket is huge, or setting up through the Rinbrum is huge. Um, always just, like, sub Rinbrum, so you, just in case they go for the Typhon, you can just, you know, because they end their turn on Typhon, and then you can go Rinbrum, uh, target Albaz, summon Albaz, contact Fuse off your Mirror Jade, GG. Um, I'll get over to the, uh, rest of the comments once we get through this, this deck profile, guys, but I do want to finish this deck profile. So, yeah, three Droll, best hand trap this format, you need to run it in your, uh, main deck. Um, and just running three at 45 card build means you see it a lot. And I would not run this card at 40 cards. I mean, I could, but I don't want to see two droll ever. I think at 45 cards, we end up not seeing it too much, which is nice. Like, you know, you don't brick on it rather. All right. So the branded spell and trap cards, three brand fusion, three opening, one red, one loss, run, one retribution. We are off of the brand of high spirits because we don't have enough dark. Uh, we don't have a, enough darks in our main deck, so there's really no point to. However, I think it would be a good option. Like if you want up your Sarinirs and run a Magnumut, you could put back in the high spirits. I just um, I'm not too much of a fan of it in this uh, in this build without the higher dark or dragon count. But outside of that, um, or the second Grand Guignol, which we are not on. So, yeah, these are pr quite standard. 
resolve branded fusion and you win the game also this is something i failed to mention in my why we have a really good fire king mashup always make and this is something galzo mentioned in his deck profile a lot so shout out galzo um you want to send branded opening to the graveyard a lot um this format because this card makes makes it so the um kieran can't just non-target pop you know your mirror jade or something so very important to be keeping these in the graveyard sometimes you can just send this off a of quem if you need to or albion uh if you know your matchup or what you're going against so definitely something to to keep in mind as you guys go through this format we got 45 viewers right now what is up y'all y'all are insane in the chat um we're gonna definitely answer most of the chat what's up guys um oh my gosh we missed so much chat uh what's up liam what's up no vanity what's my ismail what's up and wild yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna go through this deck finish this main deck now uh three nadir uh for the extenders slash non um main deck engine or non-engine i mean like this is engine but i do like nadir a lot right now um I think we're going to be running into a lot of hand traps. So just having the Nadir to play through multiple hand traps is going to be invaluable, um, frankly. That's why I think we need to be on it right now. Uh, I think you could go away with not running it last format. And I think you could potentially this format. It's just how you want to build your deck. It's something that could... If a lot of people just end up running a lot of hate towards Nadir servant and the droll becomes an issue with Nadir, I could see myself side or taking it out. I just think as of right now, it's quite good uh, because f you need the advantage that Nadir generates um, because Populous just generates a whole board. So you need your own Populous and Nadir Servant is essentially that. Uh, Nadir is asked, do not play it, says Nibiru. Uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, Nadir is actually quite good, but it's all right. Um, now, so dump Quem with opening. Uh do you mean opening with Quem? I mean, I was saying you can, basically. It's what you need at the moment, you know. Uh, make sure to keep your openings in rotation, kind of. So I do like the Nadir right now because you kind of just need the advantage or else you're going to get hand-trapped on your Luber, hand-trapped on your Brand Fusion. If you don't see the Thruster Nadir, you're not playing the game. Uh, but, you know, that's to his or her, or his or her uh so one foolish burial no gold sark because uh gold sark plays into draw and lockbird quite easily whereas this card does not as much because obviously you send tragedy but a lot of the time this is just like sending puppet sending albion uh sending saranir which are all things that play around droll so that's why i think we can uh this is like a god card in the stack and we can keep this in there yeah so that's why we're keeping this in here but because and no gold sark we just don't want to play into droll and then three thrust, one talents, and one fusion duplication. And then I guess we could do the one called by for the anti other anti ash cards plus non engine. So you have the three super. Well, I guess I should show this then too. We have three super poly, three thrust to talents, and then we have the three droll for about ten non engine and a forty five card deck. That leads to ratios where you do see about one to two non engines, uh, basically every hand. Uh, and you're able to, and any of these non-engines lets you play the game into a Fire King board. So that's why I think um, Thrust is very good right now. It's always going to be live going first or second. There's just no way uh, with all of their monster effects that need to trigger in order to set their field. Because they end on Ambla Well Pass and then end up using monster effects to set their board further on your turn. Uh, Fire King uh, Snake Eyed decks. So... Um, I think that thrust is quite good for that reason. One talents, we could be on like three talents, but I think one at 45 is just what, just fine. And then you have duplication because you run the thrust. Duplication is just an insane card. Uh, you can use it also just like <laughs> going second after you break a board uh, if you need to. Um, but usually you side out going second. It's one of those side patterns that you can just always side out going second. But I think you kind of have to run because of the thrust. Um, one called by, it's just insane in this format. I wish this was at two or three right now. It's going to be insane in this format. So there's actually, it's really good going second. So yeah, no, no point not to. And then three super poly. So we got to talk about super poly. Um, I was told a lot by people who were testing law fam nightmare that super poly was not going to be good. As it turns out, super poly does 
has a really good interaction into Promethean Fire Princess because most of those decks are going to have two fires with different attributes out. That makes a Mud Dragon, if you guys know. And Mud Dragon's effect says you can chain it, call an attribute. Monsters on neither side of the field can be targeted if they're that attribute. If you call fire, Promethean Fire Princess cannot use its effect because a fire monster cannot be targeted. So this means that Super Poly is quite good into next format. Quite good. So um, now a lot of these boards, however, are Ambla Whale Pass, but you usually can just do a play, get them to go Amblow well, and then make Mud Dragon, and then prevent, shut off the, the Princess. Super Poly is something that we could reconsider halfway into the format, but I think there's no reason not to run this. It blows out all your matchups. It wins all of your Rogue matchups. It wins you the Fire matchup. Uh, it also wins you the Voiceless Voices matchup, because you get rid of their, uh, you get rid of their Ritual. Now, they do have their Continuous Spells and Trap cards you have to be aware of, so that's why you probably want to, like, banish it, but Super Poly is going to be amazing this format, as it always is. It's the god card of Branded. Like I said, guys, Thrust is just so good. We could be on Cross Out. I recommend for the budget players out there, if you don't have the Thrust, and I would run the Cross Outs or Three Talents, and then if you're on the Cross Outs, you can run a Hand Trap Package. Yeah, two Albion, very standard. One Mirror Jade, and then one Lubellion. So extremely standard i've actually been thinking about running two mirror jade this is something that i'm going to be considering like either the the ad lib or the second mirror jade i just think i want to have a lot of options currently you've had it ruled like that yeah no i like because i know on omega i'm quite sure that i'm able to add off of that so that's something i'll have to just clear up um if that's the case, then I still think Nadir is fine, considering we're running 10 non-engine in a 45-card build. There are going to be some hands where you don't see your engine, so having the Nadir will allow you to go full combo still. Um, you know, so, and then obviously you can just attempt to play, not play around Droll, and make it so that the Nadir, or they Droll you after, after the Nadir. Uh, thoughts on shifter on the side. We're going to uh, talk about that once we get to the side deck, guys. Um, so yeah, we got one Lubalion, one Sanctifier. So Sanctifier is like the best card right now. It's genuinely probably the best card in the extra deck right now. That's why I do think that Gimmick Puppet gets a boost for this format. There's a lot of, a lot of targeting going around. Of course, Kieran doesn't target. However, um, with like uh, a lot of the other targeting uh, card effects going around, Sanctifier is able to get over that. It's basically FTK against Kashira and uh, Rescue Ace. So, uh, when Doubt just make uh, Sanctifier a lot of the time, it just puts a lot of pressure on your opponent that he can't answer and provides a thing to just constantly give you advantage. Um, and remember, it's second effect. It can come up. And then we have one Rinbrum, uh, one Titanclad. Uh, so, Titanclad... Well, we'll talk about Rinbrum. Rinbrum is incredible right now. Uh, you basically get to make... Um, Super Poly, like the Arvada or just another Fire King, uh, monster. However, the Fire King board is looking a lot different nowadays. So Rinbrum gets a little worse than it was last format. I still think it totally fine there because you need this card to set up like the tight, like, like the Typhon crackback or just, um, another interruption on your opponent's turn that they can't deal with. A lot of the time your opponent will just forget that's in graveyard or just forget about its graveyard effect. So, um, Renbrum target Albaz to make tit uh, Titan clad or the mirror Jade goes extremely hard or just like, um, Stapelia or something like that. So we got, uh, Titanclad also. I still think that we need the Titanclad. It can get you the Quemet or the Maximus. Um, worst case, or like an Albaz, let's just say. Uh, the spec Albaz is very important very, uh, in starting games. And then of course, uh, just for your rogue matchups and able to get over Pearly. It's like one of your outs for Pearly, just getting it to a point where you can out the Noir or just have an unaffected. Um... So yeah, that's why we're running these, of course. And then we have the Despians, uh, one Grand Guignol, one Despian Lulu Wall Lilith, and one Quertus. So Grand Guignol 
Uh, obviously, I, I kind of want to be running two Grand Guignol in this format. I'm not going to lie. Um, Quertus is... I don't know. I've seen some builds cut Quertus. We're obviously running the Lulu because of the Nadir Servant. I think Lulu's amazing right now. Lulu's basically an Omni Negate, guys. Um, so, that's why I do like Nadir as well. It just gives you reason to run Lulu. It's quite good right now when a card leaves the extra deck. It gives you more options. And Quertus... Is just there as a um, fail safe that a lot of de rogue decks just can't deal with. It's not great into Fire Kings, but certainly there to just get you there. And I would never cut it. Um, two Grand Guignol might be something that we consider into this format, though, for sure. Uh, then we have our two Super Poly targets. We have Garura and Mud Dragon. I. Uh, Mud Dragon is way better than Garura right now, but I think we have to run the Garura, especially since we're running the uh, Nadir Servant. If we weren't running Nadir Servant, I would still run this, but still. Um, Mud Dragon's just quite good, though, because currently uh, it has an effect where, you know, like I mentioned before, you can declare one attribute, this card becomes that attribute, and then uh, your opponent cannot target this card or monster on the fields with the same attribute. So it turns off the Princess from being able to target and extend. So that's very uh, crucial, and that's why we are on the Super Poly of this format. Here are some of the generic fusion monsters, excuse me. One Guardian Chimera. I think Guardian Chimera is still fine. I mean, the pop two, you kind of need this in the crackback against Kashira right now. Uh, elsewise, I've considered, and also against um, Rescue Ace, it's really huge just to pop the back row and go in for like a Chimera play at first uh, to out those back rows. It's very huge in that matchup. If you... um. You know, or the Dragoon play, obviously. So, uh, one Dragoon. Uh, Dragoon just basically is a card that is unoutable uh, for most decks. So, we run it. And it also gets rid of your hand trap issue because we can we run Nadir Servant. So, Nadir Servant allows us to go uh, make a Dragoon plus full combo, which is pretty huge. Uh, and then, Stapelia. Stapelia is quite good in the grind game. It's something that I've seen some people cut as of recent. It's just that every time I cut it... I regret it. It's just very free. And if I predict that we're going to be seeing as much Despia as, you know, I don't think it's going to be every table is going to be Despia whatsoever, but I think that there's going to be Despia at top table still. Uh, Stapelia is going to be very good, but it's something that we could potentially cut out maybe for a second Mirror Jade. Um, like I said, guys, uh, your mileage may vary. I wanted to give you guys a blueprint for this upcoming format. So, let's get into the side deck now. I think Nibiru is going to be quite good into this upcoming format. Uh, Fire King, Rescue Ace, they all extend into Nibiru quite hard when they're trying to kill you. So, Nibiru is going to be invaluable for that. It's actually almost main deck worthy, but it feels weird to main it without, like, Ash um, and, like, Imperm. So, I'm having this here just for going second, basically. And it's going to be quite good into this upcoming format, in my opinion. A lot less Lab, less Centurion. So, Nibiru is going to go... And less Pearly. I mean, we'll, 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 see, we'll still see Pearly, but that's why we have the Herald of the Abyss. Herald of the Abyss outs the Pearly Noir. Or you get to search off a Thrust. And nowadays, they don't really have the resources to set up the out for Herald of the Abyss. So, Herald of the Abyss is quite good. Um... And it's just a one of, so, and it's also, you can use it on, um, Fire King, theoretically. Like, I don't think you would ever side it in, but it could be there. <laughs> uh, so, one Soul Release. Soul Release is there because it's our thrust target, obviously. We get to select five, um, cards in, uh, from the graveyard and remove them from play. So, this is going to be used to blow out a lot of the fire players and their loaded graveyards so they can't just manipulate Ambla Whale and uh, Promethean Fire Princess uh, with uh, their Populous opener. Um, uh, this will blow them out if you go Soul Release usually, um, or at least get rid of an Omni Negate. And, you can, and usually they don't set up an Omni Negate on their end board, so that's why Soul Release goes very hard in uh, main phase. So... We could run Gravekeeper's Inscription, but it's not good off a of Thrust because it's like Cold Wave. You have to activate it at the beginning of the turn. So, Soul Release is our best option. It's a Thrust target. It's going to be live. So, um, that's what we're running right now outside of the Nail Shadal. I mean, this is one card versus the Nail Shadal's two, and Nail Shadal also adds a brick. So, yeah, uh, that's why we're running those. Yo, Wonky Badger, how are you doing, brother? How are you doing? Love to see you in the chat, brother. 
um emil bulgarian we know each other with that other guy <laughs> oh nice brother that's awesome we got bulgarian viewers up in the up in here uh shout out to bulgaria a stroker you know but rescue ace can play around nib i think um i mean kinda but like it's really good when they're playing into your board nib as well like you guys have to remember nib is quite good going first so it's just really versatile in that sense that's why i like it as a side deck card um it's also it's good for it going first because you can use it as a foul save if they play into your board and then you contribute off monsters that you don't care in the graveyard because you've exhausted your effects and then you can go end phase albion and then crack it back and then win that's why nibiru is quite good going first especially in branded um i know i did say it was there for going second however i still think that's quite good and rescue ace they aren't always able to make the omni negate under five and then they also i'm not sure if it's one of their spells or trap cards you're thinking of of course they can but that's why you nib at the very last possible uh scenario uh yuri diaz communicating with our branded brother um <laughs> uh, so yeah let's uh get into the rest of the side deck this okay this should be four three forbidden droplets this should be three for Ben Droplets. I can't find my third right now. So I think Droplets can be quite good, actually, to clean up a lot of the boards with, like, Baron. Um, and also just Kashira boards as well. Uh, a lot of uh, Baron is... Uh, Baron's going to be around either way. So Droplet just, like, does a number to those decks. Um, it also I, gets over Centurion or in the branded matchup. It gets over the turn skip. So that's why I think you need to run Droplets. Either this or Dark Ruler. And this is a lot more versatile than Dark Ruler. Like, Dark Ruler was very good in cash share format because you didn't really have, like, um, a whole lot of other things going on besides cash share. Um, and uh, Droplet is just really a lot more versatile. It covers a lot more matchups, so that's why we're running it. Um, this was a Tikaboo. You can run a Tikaboo. Like, this could theoretically be a Tikaboo because Tikaboo is actually quite good at one. Um, in our deck, so this is something you should consider to run. Um, Tikaboo uh, is really good against the fire decks. So, um, but it's that one. Uh, then we have three Cosmic Cyclone. Cosmic Cyclone continues to be one of the best spells and trap cards of the format because you're obviously going to be able to pop the Fire King Island. Um, and also just like other things like the, uh, you know, My Friend Pearly or the Birth. Uh, cashier birth is really annoying right now, uh, especially for our deck and the anti spells as well. Um, cashier birth really does hurt our deck. And then I, I've heard rumblings that anti spell might make a, uh, comeback. So, um, cosmic cyclone just, uh, <clears throat> is really going to be there in case, uh, and it's really good in the grind games against fire Kings. Obviously you want going first or second against fire king i covered this in my how to side and branded guys if you guys haven't already checked out that video uh go check it out after the stream we upload uh the best side cards in branded we go over uh matchups and side patterns what to side out going first and second with branded very highly requested video actually a lot of you guys have come into this chat and just be like hey can you guys like um make a guide on how to side with branded and we got it out there it's a 26 minute guide i covered basically everything um so yeah let's cosmic cyclone is very good it could be lightning storm and feather duster but i think these are way better like way 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 better so like i don't even want to say it could be like for this format it really shouldn't be um because the sanctuary obviously gets over feather duster and lightning storm and then a lot of the boards don't really benefit or like it's hard to lightning storm a lot of these boards 37 or 57 viewers what is up guys we're just finishing here out our fam nightmare deck profile uh we got the three fantastical dragon phantasmes so why are we running phantasme this format because phantasme in this format is going to be incredible there's going to be a lot of links sp little knight was already taking over the format now every fire deck is going to be running or ending on a link uh called amblo whale or um you know there's gonna be uh princess plays as well on their turn so a lot of the time you can actually get uh three cards out of phantasma which is pretty great which is pretty nice like not just like the one the one for one uh it was for a lot of last the last two formats um it's also a dark so you could run a lure if droll really doesn't end up like being in the format which it will be but it's something to consider it's also a dragon so it these are things to consider if you want to end up running like borrowed furious or something of that nature um 
so yeah, uh, three Phantasme is going to go very hard against basically every deck in the format outside of Labyrinth right now. Um, just going second, you're going to want to side this out about, against basically everything except for Pearly. Um, maybe Kashira too, but... You know, a lot of those fire decks are really going to have a tough time with Phantasme, especially since it has its targeting uh, negation, which there's going to be a lot of cards that target this format. So definitely useful in that regard, and I think is going to be very much worth it. Uh, I've seen the OCG run it. I know you can't take direct comparisons from the OCG, but I still think that uh, it's been very good the last couple formats, and there is no reason why it shouldn't get better, given the fact that a lot of decks are now going to be ending on their links um like amblo well so yeah guys that was the deck profile um very much uh looking forward to this upcoming format looking forward to uh testing a lot a lot playing a lot of events going to the ycs I'm, i presume raleigh will be under this this list um in this format but we, we will see uh, I think Branded's an amazing option, as you guys know from all these videos. Keep spreading the Branded uh, love. Try to spread the knowledge, too, because this deck's very good, very underrated to some people. Um, there's lots of lines that you guys... I just want to get out there so you guys can go out there and win tournaments for Branded. Um, oh, was that 14 cards? Am I missing one? 